Today we're going to talk about spiritual discernment. This is a topic the Lord gave me, and it's very important, very, very important for the, not only every Christian to understand this, but to walk in it. That's important. So let's bow our heads as we ask God to bless this word. Heavenly Father, enlighten our eyes, O Lord, that our faith may be fixed upon you and only you, and our souls may take counsel in the sweetness of your love. Father, implant true repentance in our hearts through Jesus our Lord that we may come out and be separate from the world that you would receive us unto yourself. And Holy Spirit, you are the one that brings all the things that Christ has said back to remembrance. Bind this word to our hearts, Father, that we should not only be full of spiritual discernment, but we might learn something this morning. We ask this in Christ's holy name, and they said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Enlighten our eyes. Enlighten our eyes. Open our ears. And most of all, open our mouths to witness to people, to tell them about Christ in our life. A lot of times we don't have time to witness, or we don't take time to witness, or we're afraid to witness because of embarrassment or rebuke. Every time I've done it for the Lord, I've had good results because He's prodded me to do it. When you wait upon the Lord and you move upon Him telling you to do something, then you'll receive a blessing. Don't be afraid to witness. Don't do that. There's been many a times I've witnessed for the Lord and people have been led to God just because I asked them a question about Jesus. It opens a conversation. If they don't want Christ in their life, they'll tell you. You'll find out real fast. Move on to someone that does want to hear the word. Move on. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little something about discernment you may not know. But discernment is God's call to intercession, not fault finding. I've seen a lot of people say they have the gift of spiritual discernment. And what do they do? They, they upbraid the people. They get them up here and they embarrass them. Maybe God did give them the gift of discernment, but they're using it wrongly. Everything that God gives us, a gift or a word, should always be done in love. Everybody say love. love. Say God's love. God's love. We must learn who is gold and who is gold-plated. Discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's knowing the difference between right and almost right. Even Peter, through discernment, said, Thou art the Christ to the Lord. Then turned around and prayed that the cross would be far from him. When it was God the Father's will to take Jesus to the cross... That we might be saved. That the Gentiles would, Gentiles would be grafted into the vine. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Discernment realizes when others are blind. And intercedes for them based on their ignorance rather than their actions. There's been many a times I have counseled people on what they may need to do to get closer to the Lord. And sometimes they ignore that counsel, which is fine. Because I'm here just to tell you what the Word says. I'm the mouth of the body. But I'm not here to make you do something you don't want to do. You have free will. Can you say amen? amen. When you realize that people are blind, and this whole world out here has been blinded by Satan. They don't hear what you hear. They don't see what you see. Don't upbraid them. Pray for them. Because you know the truth. You know what the Holy Spirit has spoken to your spirit. Or through your eyes that you have seen in the spiritual realm. You know. 
Love them into the kingdom. Love them into the kingdom. Their soul can be saved and you can tell them they can be saved. Don't tell somebody they're going to hell. Tell them they can go to heaven. The truth of the matter, every unsaved man out here has conviction of the Holy Spirit upon him. And he knows he's not right with God. He knows he's not right with God. He doesn't need somebody else to tell him because he already knows. Proverbs 3, 21 and 22 says, My son, let, can't, let them not depart from thy eyes. Speaking of the word, the logos. Keep sound wisdom and discretion so that they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. If you claim to have the gift of discernment in your life, any kind of discernment, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute, but if you claim to have discernment in your life, you're going to know the Word of God. Maybe you won't know it like a, a pastor or someone else who's been 40 or 50 years in the Word, but you know enough about it. I said you know enough about it to speak the truth to someone. I'm going to give you eight signs that you may have the gift of discernment today. You might want to write these down. In Ephesians 1 and verse 18 and 19, it says... The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Everybody say, my eyes. Being enlightened. Means you're open to see the spiritual realm. It will not happen every day. It will not happen every moment. But when God moves through the Holy Spirit to show you something, He will show you. Sometimes you're not to do anything. It's a showing to pray for that person or a showing to pray for a certain area of the world one night I was laying in my bed and God woke me up suddenly and I was praying in the spirit when I woke up I actually had my hands up sitting in bed praying in the spirit I had no idea why and the next morning when I did finally wake up again I asked the Lord why was I praying and he said there was a man in China that needed a prayer that's who you was praying for. In China. Never been to China. Been to Taiwan. But never been to China. Hallelujah. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. Yes. According to the working of his mighty power. Number one, the desire for the gift. You've got to be desirous to have the gift of discernment. And actually, all of you can walk in it. Some of you won't walk as deep as others. For the Spirit Himself is the one who empowers the gifts in us. As with other spiritual gifts, desire is often the first time of a gift. You've got to want it. If you don't want to talk in tongues, you won't talk in tongues. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He'll never force you to do something that you're not willing to do. I've seen a lot of people that don't desire to speak in tongues, and they don't. But that's okay. That doesn't mean they're not saved. What it does mean is they reject the empowerment of the Spirit at times. Which could result in a loss of rewards. Amen? You may have a longing to see people set free from demonic bondage. Or you may want to be more effective in prayer and spiritual warfare. I believe that's what the gift of discernment is really about. To pray for those who need it. Some of you don't have much of a prayer life, I might say. Because I love you. You need to take more time, I said more time, to get on your knees and commune with our Lord. He wants you to come and commune with Him. He wants to be a part of your life. You may have a desire for holiness. Perhaps you're simply curious about the spiritual realm. And that's okay. God wants you to know that the spiritual realm is here. 
Jesus said the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. It's here. I said it's here. Number two, love for God's presence. Do you love the presence of God so much that you're desirous to be there all the time with Him? I don't know about you, but like a junkie, (laughs) I'm hooked on the Holy Ghost. I am. Can't get enough of Him. If you don't want your piece of cake... <laughs> I'll eat it too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give me all you can give me, Father. Hallelujah. There are times the Holy Spirit comes so strong upon me that I can't hardly stand. And I don't sometimes. Truly. The love for God's presence is one of the reasons you might desire that gift. One of the benefits of having a gift of discernment is a heightened aware of God's presence. When I go into a home somewhere or go into an area somewhere, I know if God's there or He's not. I know. Everybody say, I know. know. Presence and anointing. A true discerner will have a passion for the ungrieved presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. I want Him to come in and pump me full of new wine. I want to be drunk in the Holy Ghost. I used to get drunk other ways. Shouldn't I have that same desire even more for God's presence? Number three is sensitivity to the spiritual atmosphere. That's what I'm talking about. When you go somewhere, do you know if the Holy Ghost is there? When you meet with people and talk with people, do you sense the presence of the Lord? Or if you don't, do you not sense His presence? And know that it's going to be a short meeting. Hallelujah. You may be more sensitive to the spiritual atmosphere than other people. In the early stages of developing this gift, you may be affected adversely by the presence of demonic activity. I remember... Sitting on the toilet. Can we talk honestly? Now out of the hamper came a demonic spirit. Scared the living heck out of me. Never saw a demon before. I did that day and I came right out and told my wife. I said, you ain't going to believe what happened to me. And when I taught on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, when I taught on deliverance and discernment, for I am a deliverance pastor. I want you to know that. Dr. Summerall, (laughs) let me tell you what. If you're not into deliverance, you better get ready for a whipping. I said a whipping. Because the devil ain't going to leave you alone. He's been attacking this church for months. Why? Because we are doing something. We're worshiping and praising. We're telling people about Jesus. When your environment is full of demonic activity, you'll know when you get in the midst of it. You'll know. I was invited one time to a a Catholic woman's conference to speak. (laughs) Yeah, don't start with me. I'm telling you. And I went there and I was real quiet and I wouldn't let the lady who was leading it lead it and I didn't say anything. And she got up and we were sitting in a circle. I don't know, 15 women maybe, Diana, a circle. And she got up and she said, Oh, do you see the beautiful rose growing out of the floor? And everybody's going, Yeah, I see the beautiful rose. And I'm going, Where's the rose? <laughs> And then she went on and on and on, and I sensed new age, that spirit there. And finally, I'd had enough. Mm -hmm. And you know me. I'm a bull in a china shop. I'll tell it the way it is. And I stood up and said, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. And they all looked like you. So I started around the group. I started around. And as I went around, I started praying for them all to receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of them were getting so blessed. And some of them started to scream, Don't touch me! (laughs) 
I said, come out of her! You're not a priest. I said, I'm a priest of the Most High. Yeah. Put my hand right on her head. Yeah. We've seen things and that's, oh my goodness, that happened in that room. They were freaking out. Why? Because they were watching a rose on the floor. Don't ask me what was going on, but I just had enough of it. But anyway, they left there different when they came. Hallelujah. I was never invited back. (laughs) The reality is that we live in a natural world and a spiritual world concurrently. We can see both realms. And you're supposed to see both realms. God is a spirit and those that worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth, the Bible says. In the Bible, when Jacob came across a group of angels, he named the place Mahatnium, meaning double camp. Like Jacob realized, he also lived in a double camp where there is constant spiritual activity going on. Right now, there's angels standing in this room. Can you see them? I said, can you see them? Open your eyes. Those with the gift of discernment have spiritual senses that are attuned to this very thing. There's been times that I have been playing music and I've seen them standing behind Sherry. Standing over behind Gary's. Two of them right now. Proverbs 10, verse 22 through 24 says, The blessing of Adonai is what makes people rich. And he doesn't mix sorrow with it. God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of sorrow. He's the author author of peace and love. To a fool, vileness is like a game. And is wisdom to a person of discernment. What a fool dreads will overtake him. But the righteous will be given his desire. Let that sink in for a minute. Are you desiring something in your life right now? Number four, feeling different from other people. Even when I was a young kid being raised up, I didn't like spending a whole lot of time with the young kids. I'd always go to the elderly's home and sit and talk to them. Because there was a lot of wisdom in the people who were older. Matter of fact, that's how I got into the Navy. I had an old petty officer that was in the the Navy for 54 years. And he talked me into going into the Navy. It's the best thing I ever did. Because I was a punk. Being honest with you. I was not good. I was not born again. But I learned real quick that when the petty officer said jump, you jumped. Amen. Amen. I can sense things that other people can't see at times. And at times I'll say something, at times I will not. I'll just pray for them accordingly in my prayers at night. This ability can result in us feeling different, lonely, or misunderstood at times. Especially when starting out, it's so vital that someone with a developing spirit of the gift of discernment finds a safe place to journey with others who are similarly gifted and accountable in the life of their church. This church believes in the gift of discernment. Amen. Amen. Feel safe here. If you see something and want to confide in one of the pastors, come do it. Don't be afraid of it. Hallelujah. Number five is unusual signs. It's not uncommon for someone who is gifted in discernment to experience unusual events or manifestations. One time I was in a healing line and I was praying for people and they were lined up. And behind was my deacons. Pastor Jim was there and Leo 
and some of the others that were the deacons in the church. And we were going down the line and we were praying for them. And I got to one girl who was standing in the front and I went to lay hands on her and God said, don't touch her. My hand came back. And I said, don't touch her. (laughs) The other deacons pulled their hands back. And I said, why are you in the healing line? Well, I got the flu and I got a cold and I need to be healed. And God said, tell her this. This is the last time I'm going to ask you for salvation. Never forget it. I said, how many times has God tried to touch your heart? Oh, I'm not here for that. I'm here for the healing. I said, this is your last chance. Tell her I said that, the Lord said. Tell her it's the last chance. And I told her. She got angry. Remember her, Diana? She got angry. She went out the door and left the church. And my heart broke for her. Because I knew what God had said to my spirit. She didn't want God. She wanted the the gifts of the Lord. But she didn't want the salvation of the Lord. She didn't want to repent. And I went on down the healing line. I told her it was her last chance. I told her that. A week later, they found her dead on her front lawn. She went out to pick up a, a Sunday paper off her lawn and fell over dead. That's a true story. Does God desire that all should be saved? Absolutely. Is it possible that some will not? Absolutely. Depends on their hearts. What are the unusual signs? Well, people who are incubating a spiritual gift of discernment begin to see or feel things that others are not aware of. There's been times I have been preaching and teaching and I have felt like sore feet one time my feet were so sore I could hardly walk and I thought Lord what is going on he says ask I said okay I said who's got the sore feet in here it's messing me up and a little old lady in the back went I said come up here please And I anointed her with oil and I prayed with her. And she had fallen arches is what it was. Very painful. And I prayed with her. And what I felt went away. And what she felt went away. Through discernment. I felt in my body what she was feeling in hers. There's been times I went to pray for people that the same thing has happened to me. Are you having a problem with a leg, a left leg, a sciatic problem? I'll pray with them. Linda's been there, seen all that. Go on. That's the gift of discernment. It comes in different ways, in different forms. You can't bind one way to the Holy Spirit. He does many administrations of the gifts. This may include unusual visions or dreams. I used to have visions. But now I have dreams. I'm an old man. Don't don't laugh with me. (laughs) And sensations that alert them to what is happening in the spiritual realm. Number six, childhood or pre-salvation signs. Now listen to me very carefully. When you were being raised up, could it be that God was already, because he knows who you are, and he knows that you will be saved one day, started doing things in your life is that possible absolutely if you'll remember correctly jesus when mary went to elizabeth and she had john in her womb and the two babies got together they jumped for joy the bible tells us that god knows us in our mother's womb that's why it's such a blessing for a child to be born maybe the next minister who will lead thousands to Jesus but spiritual discernment is something that happens in the spiritual realm everything happens in the spiritual realm first 
It always happens here first. If it doesn't happen here, it will not happen here. Even when a talent or a gift is misused, God can redeem it. How many times has people given a word that was not true? I had a lady in the church one time, very lovely woman, loved her. But every time we turned around, she was speaking something for the Lord. I finally had to sit her down because it was very loving. It was always God loves you, God upholds you, and all this. But not every day. We got to be careful what we say in the name of the Lord. Amen? I said, Amen. You got to be sure it's of God. Then if it don't come to pass, if it's a prophetic utterance and it doesn't come to pass, the Bible says we're not going to take them out back and stone them, but we're not going to fear what they say any longer. Can you say amen? amen? And when Trump ran for the second term, there was a lot of people on TV saying he's going to get it. Second term. And my spirit said, no, he's not. They're going to steal it. They're going to rob the election. What happened, only God knows. I don't have the insight into that. But I knew he wasn't going to be president. And all these prophets on TV, supposed prophets, yeah. on TV were saying, well, he's going to get it. It's in the bag. Be careful who you listen to. As a child, I did see things at night. And I was sensitive to the spiritual realm. Sometimes I did encounter demonic activity in our home. My mom would go to work and my mother and father were divorced. And she would leave us in the custody of a woman named Mrs. Penrod. Mrs. Penrod was a nice little old lady. But she was a witch. (laughs) We'd be walking through a room. And she'd say, hold up. Let those spirits by. So no wonder we were freaked out at night. Absolutely. <laughs> we were. I'm not kidding. And she'd get tea out and read the leaves in a little cup and stuff. And I'm like, we're not going to drink it? Number seven is the ability to know what lies behind a person's words or actions. See, as a pastor, our duty is to read between the lines to hear the things that are not being said to know the difference of what's in the heart of some people someone with a gift of discernment has the ability to see behind what a person is saying or presenting you may know whether they are telling the truth or not You may also notice if someone is manifesting a demonic spirit and be able to identify what that spirit is. I've seen people's faces change in prayer lines. That's not always the case, however. Sometimes we don't see it. But we hear it, and we feel like we have a heavy stone on our spirit. And we know that something is wrong, but we haven't quite put our finger on it yet. If you have complete discernment, you'll begin to realize it because the Holy Spirit will move through you. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Everybody say, prove all things. things. Hold fast to that which is good. I was in a meeting with Dr. Summerall one time and A lady stood up to give a tongue. And Dr. Summerall said, Shut up! That's not of God. And she continued on. Like she just suddenly stopped and started again. And Dr. Summerall says, Deacons, take her out of the assembly. They threw her out the door. That's discernment. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13.9 says, For we know in part, And we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, meaning Jesus, then that which is in part shall be done away with. 
There won't be no need for all the gifts of the Spirit when Jesus comes because we'll all be like Him. Number eight is confirmation of the discernment gift in others and leaders. As a pastor, I have a duty to acknowledge your gifts to you if you operate in them. You may have the gift confirmed through a prophecy given to you or an example, or my gift of discernment was identified through prophecy twice. Perhaps this was because I was reluctant to accept it. I didn't want to see these things. But soon I realized that the bottom line was the presence of any gift that was identified in my life or in the church was to be used by God for His purposes. I had to be used by God. Amen. When you submit what you are seeing or sensing, your leaders confirm your accuracy and your gifts begin to be recognized in its effectiveness. Whenever a gift is used to criticize or tear down a church person or the church leader, you know it is being misused. Or you may realize it is simply a person hurt or frustration masquerading as discernment. I have seen some people tell people they have a certain problem in their life when in reality they're the ones that had the problem. Believe it or not, pastors preach to themselves. I'm going to say that again. Because <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit preaching through us. I learn just as much as you do when the Lord speaks through me. These kind of abuses are common and have brought dispute to the gift of discernment. Some churches refuse to operate in these gifts. And for that reason, because of their abuse. If someone tears down someone with this gift, supposed gift, that's not of God. Everything must operate through love. Everything. I'd love to teach you about the gifts. You know, there's three levels of discernment. The natural perception. You ever had a salesman call you? And immediately your spirit goes, Oh no! Or maybe it said, buy this. That's called natural perception. The ability to judge well. The dictionary defines sermon, sir, discernment as the ability to judge well. So at the most basic level of discernment, everybody say basic, basic. is to judge well. And some of us don't have any. $50 for a bar of candy? Give it to me. I'm preaching better than your amen. And... Do you know what's going on behind the scenes? The writer in Hebrews says it is the mark of a Christian's maturity to grow in discernment. Solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. I have seen people come into the church who everybody thought was so wonderful and out of love. I take that person to the side and I tell them, quote, unquote, leave and don't come back. Out of love. If they don't hear the pastor of a church, what else are they going to do? The head of the church is Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. But we are to align ourselves with the elders of the church. I have seen people come in and try to disrupt a church. If I, did, if I was preaching, I'd do a better job. I don't agree with that color of carpet. 
You know what? I don't care if it's pink. I really don't. Green, pink, orange. Now, orange might be a little rough. But I could still preach on it. Amen? Amen. Solid food is for the mature. Having a discernment ability. The second level of discernment is a heightened ability to discern. A frequently hearing from people who are experiencing the second level of discernment and who are having a difficult time knowing what to do about it, what they're sensing. But instead of coming and talking to the elders of the church, they hold it in. I'm here. What were his pastors here for? Pastors begat pastors. Sheep begat sheep. That's what the Bible says. Can you say amen? amen? I'm here to get you ready. If you're going to be a pastor, I'm here to get you ready. I'm here for you. But some become so embarrassed in their learning. They don't say anything. They don't do anything about it. You see... Signs of this level of discernment include being tuned into people's motives. That guy that called you wanted to sell you that sweeper or comes to your door and knocks on your door, he's only interested in one thing, selling you the sweeper. Are you perceiving the spiritual realm? Are you being sensitive to atmospheres, both spiritual and natural? The ability to discern the demonic realm and the spiritual realities of what's going on in your life. The Bible tells us there's a spiritual gift of discernment of spirits, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a gift. Say amen. Amen. But there are different levels of it. Some of you start out with the level one, which is the natural realm. And some stop right there. It scares some people. And let me tell you, rightly so. I said rightly so. If you're not prayed up, and I call it blood up, be careful. Because the devil will beat your brains out. Oh, I'm more powerful than he is. If you know what he's doing. Can you see what he's doing in your life? Can you see the way he's pulling you? Maybe you have that certain lust in your flesh and you don't want to admit it to anyone, but if God knows he's going to allow, listen to me, an attack on your flesh. Well, how do I know I got it? Are you being attacked? You think the devil's going to attack you with a spirit of lust? If you don't have any, that'd be kind of dumb. And he's more cunning and subtle than any beast of the field. He knows that word better than all of us put together. So we've got to be able to discern what's going on. The ability to discern the demonic realm. (laughs) There's been times that this gift has shook me. One time I was preaching on 3rd Avenue in Terre Haute and God said, look. And I looked at the congregation and all I saw was white and black orbs. And God said, the white ones are truly born again. The black ones are not. And so I knew at that moment who in my church was born again and who wasn't. And I began to work on the black orbs. That's what discernment does. Amen. You know, some people come into churches and they move from different churches to different churches to different church, and they come in and they act holier than thou, when in reality, they're still searching. That's why we should love them in. Love them in. And not be afraid to tell them the truth. A lot of people leave because of truth. You know, the Bible says that truth will set you free. 
the truth will keep the congregation free. First Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14.1, Paul says, follow the way of love. I always tell my people, follow the love channel. If you follow the love of God, you will always be right in the Spirit. But if for any reason you're not following that love, you get outside it. You've got to eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. This brings us to the third level of discernment. Seeing from God's viewpoint as the Father sees. When God told me to look, He said, look up. And I looked up, I saw the white and black orbs in the congregation. I was shocked. Because some of these people had attended the church for years and weren't even saved. They professed to be saved. They acknowledged to be saved. They took part in communion. You see, I'm not supposed to tear them out. You're not supposed to take and get the tares out of the wheat. You're not to do that. You're to make them wheat. Hello? We've got to have discernment. Seeing from God's viewpoint. See, the third level of discernment is only available to those who are walking in relationship with God Almighty. When your ability to discern is submitted to the Holy Spirit and based in the Father's love, it will truly be a gift. Anyone can see what is happening in the natural realm. Some people may have the ability to see in the spiritual realm. But this is not always sourced in the Holy Spirit. Everybody get that? Sometimes the devil can show you things. Like he did Jesus in the temptation in the desert. Beware lest you think you stand lest you fall, the Bible says. The fruit of discernment will not be fear. Suspicion, confusion, or accusation. Some signs of this level of discernment operating may include your discernment is life-giving. One time I was driving down the road and it was about 9 o'clock at night and I was heading home from a late night at the office. And as I drove down the road, the Lord said, Go to this address. Okay. I drove to that address, walked up, knocked on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Nothing. I started to turn and walk away and God said, Knock harder! And pretty soon this man came to the door. And I said, My name's Pastor Kelly. Can I talk with you? Uh, uh, come on in. When I went in, I saw a noose hung from his archway down and a chair and he was trying to climb in it when I knocked on the door. If I had not been obedient, he would have killed himself. And he told me that. I invited him to the church. He got saved. As a matter of fact, his whole family got saved. That's a true story. As God is my witness. You've got to listen to what God says. Oh, I'm embarrassed. I can't do it. You've got to do it. You've got to. Because you may save a soul. You may save the life of that person. Your discernment is life-giving. It brings freedom and transformation. It builds the church. It draws people to Jesus. With discernment comes division though. A person who seeks to become discerning must be willing to suffer the effects of this division. It will not only divide a believer from an unbeliever, 
But it may divide a discerning believer from a non-discerning believer. I was told one time at a church not to come back because I prayed in the Holy Spirit. True story. It will separate the mature from the immature, the naive from the prudent. When our eyes are focused on what our Father is doing, the gift of discernment will grow to a powerful level. We can then act and speak accordingly as Jesus did. Jesus was able to look at the tax collector sitting in his booth, a man seen by others as a cheat, a shark, a total tool of Rome, and see a disciple. He called Matthew into his destiny. Anyone else wouldn't see an apostle. But Jesus saw the apostle in him. Jesus is able to look forward into time. He knows who's going to be saved and he knows who will not be saved. Jesus was able to walk into a workplace where there was weariness and frustration and see that his father was bringing a miracle supply. He spoke a word of command and as the fishermen responded to that word, a school of fish was thrust into the nets. Don't throw it on this side. Throw your line on this side. I wish I had that ability to fish. (laughs) Jesus walked into a home where there was sickness and saw his father bringing healing. He spoke the word and Peter's mother-in-law rose up from her sickbed and immediately went in and prepared them food. Jesus didn't see the sickness. He saw her well. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. This is one of my favorite scriptures. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. I don't know about you, but I want everything God can give me. Can you say amen? Amen. You must operate in discernment. No matter what level you're at, you must operate in what you have. If not, you're going to be fooled. You're going to be tricked. And someone's going to sway you to a gospel that is not of Jesus Christ. We're in the last days. There's many false prophets out here. Many, many, many false prophets. Many ones that claim to be the Messiah. Yanuka. He showed up in Israel and everybody's saying he's the Messiah. And he's healing people. They're being healed. And they all swarm him and kiss his hands. Would you stand for me? Let's say a prayer together. What do you say? I want to say this. Bow your heads. Father, I want to know you more. Help me be more like Jesus. To see as you see. In every situation. Today, share your desires. Your intentions with me. Holy Spirit, Empower me to discern and to speak words of life that bring healing, freedom, transformation. Help me to become so tuned to what is on your heart that when people encounter me, they encounter Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. pray. Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus' name for the gift of discernment 
and to be in my life. Anoint me. Anoint me. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen.